What is good, everybody? This is another week of the Eye Test Takes podcast. I'm your host, Logan Hill, once again. Uh, this is recapping week six. I was only able to watch three games this week, unfortunately. Uh, but let's just kind of get right into it. It was an interesting week in the NFL. Week six, episode six, Eye Test Takes. Let's get it. Uh, so first game um, we're going to get into here is San Francisco versus the L.A. Rams. Um, I wanted to watch this game because, you know, at the I didn't get to watch it live, but I got to re-watch it here. And when I saw the final score, I was, I was shocked. I mean, the fact that the 49ers were able to beat the Rams was just an indication to me that maybe the Rams aren't everything they're chalked up to be. Uh, so I wanted to go back and watch that game just to see some things here and there, just just to you know get an idea of, of how that game just went in in general. And some of the things I took away from it was, man, Sh- Kyle Shanahan really just you know game played, just I mean play called, game design, play design, everything. Just it was a great game plan by him. I mean he kind of realized that Jimmy G especially last week when Jimmy G had to get benched uh, because he just didn't look as healthy as he could have been. Uh, Shanahan kind of realized that and built a game plan perfectly so that Jimmy G didn't have to do too much in this game, and it it worked to perfection, and obviously it got them the win. Um, And just another thing I wanted to point out was Raheem Mostert, I absolutely love that running back. He is unbelievable. He actually at one point – once upon a time, long time ago, actually, he was on the Eagles practice squad, and he actually he kind of made some plays here and there in the in the preseason for that season. I don't even remember what year it was. I mean, I think it was when Chip Kelly was still with the Eagles. Um, but yeah, he he actually shined a little bit in the preseason then, and now he's just making a name for himself once again. Uh, but actually, in the NFL, I mean, he is fast as all get out. And he runs tough. I mean, he absolutely will run it down your throat if he needs to to get some extra yardage. Um, so he's he's a great running back. I love watching him play. It's really unfortunate that he was hurt before this game, and then he comes out of this game limping, and they think they're probably going to have to put him on IR for a high ankle sprain. So that's unfortunate, especially considering I have him on a fantasy team. So, oh well. But I still like watching him play. Hopefully he gets back healthy, and he's he's good to go for the rest of the season. Um, Another thing I wanted to point out as well was the fact that the Shanahan offense and McVay offense are are almost mirror images of each other. And so it's kind of funny to watch them play against each other because it's almost like you're watching the same offense get on the field at every single, you know, point in the game. I mean, when one team comes off the field, the other team comes on and you're like, did anything switch other than the, the uniforms? It's pretty wild. I will say, though, I, I do believe that Shanahan has a little bit more juice in the creativity department when it comes to, to some of the you know game designs. Um, so I just think Shanahan's a slightly better coach than McVay, uh, but it's pretty close. Like They are very good at their jobs, both of them, no matter how you want to look at it. And then the my biggest takeaway, really, in the, the – the reason why I think San Francisco was able to win this game um, was the fact that I think if you have, or if your defense has competent linebackers and disciplined linebackers and safeties, you have a very good chance of, of beating the Rams because the Rams do so much misdirection and, and stuff of that nature, just that messes with the eye discipline of linebackers and safeties in that back half of the defense that if you can have players that are smart enough to stay with them and and not bite on every cheese that you know the offense throws out there, it's a play fake here, they run that direction. If they can be disciplined and they're competent and they can run sideline to sideline, you have a very good chance of beating the Rams. Um, I mean, I watched the Eagles play the Rams early, earlier this year, and it's a known fact that the the Eagles linebackers are very, very bad, and the safeties are very subpar. Uh, Roddy McLeod's really the only safety on the Eagles that, I mean, can really do anything. Uh, he makes some plays here and there. But, I mean, 
the 49ers back half is pretty impressive with Jaquaski Tart, Jimmy Ward's impressive. Uh, then the linebackers right now with Dre Greenlaw, which he's kind of an under-the-radar guy. And then, of course, the superstar they got in Fred Warner Jr. He's unbelievable. So they were able to really stymie that, that Rams offense because they were able to just track them down and stay disciplined. So that's really the, the key there to you know doing something against the Rams, beating the Rams, is, is just playing smart on defense. Um, and then another thing, this is – I just, there's a lot of people out there before this game saying, oh, look at the Rams, man. The Rams might be the best team in the NFC. I don't know. There's some things here. like, But realistically, let's just take a look at it for a second. The Rams are 4-2. and two. Good record. Okay. Yeah. I you know I agree with that. Yeah, that's a good record. Um, who have they beaten? Let's see. The NFC East. The L.A. Rams have literally beaten every single team in the NFC East this year, and they stink. Every team stinks. I mean, we've seen it all year long. The NFC East is terrible. And people wanted to give the Rams like this, this high pedestal and say, you know, they're, they're a great team. The only teams they've literally beaten are the teams in the NFC East. So if you want to give them a NFC East crown, uh, do it, but I'm I'm not gonna say the Rams are a fantastic team just yet. I mean, the two teams that they've played that weren't the Rams, I mean, they were close against the Bills, um, but in this game they really got dominated by San Fran. So, I mean, that is what it is. But I just somebody tell me like what they what they're seeing other than the fact that they've beaten up on very bad teams so far this year. All right, so next game we're going to get into is Eagles versus Ravens. Man, this game was ugly, especially in the first half for the Eagles. Anything that could go wrong did go wrong. Offensive line, horrible. Calais Campbell literally just putting his giant 6'8", 350-pound body all the way through the O-line, all freaking first quarter, basically, Um, and through the – Second quarter, really. I mean, he was dominant pretty much all day. Uh, But he was really just wreaking havoc in the first half, uh, making life very difficult for Carson Wentz. He had very little time to to throw the ball. Um, But he was shaky at at the beginning as well. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say Wentz was great in the first half either. Nothing could get going. The run game wasn't getting going. I mean, it it was it was full blown ugly. And Lamar Jackson was making plays. They go up. 17-0 17-0 to zero at one point. Uh, just, just I thought this stat was crazy. It was even said on the broadcast that with 12 minutes left in the second quarter, the Eagles had five yards of offense, five total yards, between running and passing. That's how just dominant the Ravens' defense was in the first half, basically. Uh, and then once the Eagles, it was right there at the end of the first half, Eagles got the ball back after being down 17-0. And they come out with uh, Jalen Hurts, which is obviously the guy they took in the second round this year. Controversy around that pick, of course. And he kind of gives the Eagles a little bit of a spark. He has like a 20-yard run um, with Wentz lead blocking, which is just hilarious to me, just seeing him push back a a safety. Um, But, yeah, it gives the Eagles a little bit of life there in in the second half. And they drive down, and it looks like it's going to be something in the drive. And it just, Miles Sanders drops a perfect pass from Wentz once they get into the red zone. And then eventually it gets down to a fourth of one after that. And they go for it, go for a QB sneak. It gets stuffed. And basically, right then and there, it was just the end of the half. Eagles looked like they had. Nothing going once again. Then they came back out in the second half, and I will give them credit. They fought hard. They're a very resilient team, just like they've shown all year, even though they're pretty bad. Um, But they came out in the second half, and Wentz just – his meter for levels of Fs uh, that he had was was extremely low. It was was about on E, and he was just slinging around the yard in the second half. I mean – 
he made some some throws that like honestly probably uh, some of them should have probably been picked off, but he was just he just didn't care. Uh, he was throwing off the off his back foot multiple times, just throwing dimes to people, and it was just working out in the second half. It was crazy. Uh, he led them on a comeback. They had a chance to win at the end, um, but they didn't convert on the two point conversion to tie the game. And uh, that is what it is, man. The, the Ravens just they were just able to to squeak that one out. Um, the on the back of Lamar Jackson, really. It's a it was a weird kind of dichotomy in this game though with Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson was the sole reason the Ravens won the game, but also Lamar Jackson didn't play as well as I thought he would have in this game, considering how up and down the Eagles defense has been. The Eagles D line was giving him a little bit of trouble. Um, but it was really Lamar's inaccuracy throwing the ball that was kind of throwing me off a little bit. Like, I love Lamar Jackson straight up. think he's a phenomenal player. Uh, but there is times where, like, I, like on Sunday, where I watch that game and say literally the only reason that Lamar and the Ravens are winning the game is because Lamar is bailing himself and the offense out by running the ball. And, of course, that's a skill that he has, and, and of course he's going to utilize it. But that's not always going to be the case ever. Um, so I just I think he has to hone in on some of his passing ability uh, because it's it's a very erratic at this point in time. And he, I don't know, it's like he gets too cute at times. Like he'll sidearm a throw where you, you just say, man, if you just throw that normal, that's a completion right there. And he sidearms it, and it's slightly off target, and you know a receiver gets a hand on it or something, and it's not completed. I just don't know. I think Lamar just needs to to really focus in on that, and he will be good. But there is some concerning things about his game, uh, especially you know seeing them against a team that's just not very good in the Eagles. You like to think that if he does some of the same things against the good teams, kind of like in Kansas City where they just steamrolled them, it's not going to be good for the Ravens. Um, but, yeah, so it is what it is. Eagles fought back. Ravens just the better team. That's how the NFL goes. All right, next game we're going Dallas versus Arizona. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I watched – or before this game even started, I was thinking, and I even tweeted something out that I'll get to in a minute – I really thought before this game, this game was going to be awesome. Like, Andy Dalton, going to be a cool story. He's going to go out there and sling it around the yard because this is probably the best weapons he's ever had in his NFL career on offense. I mean, they have weapons everywhere. everywhere. Cooper, C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, Zeke. Dalton Schultz is even very good. Like, when Jarwin went down, I was like, oh, man, they're not going to have a, a tight end to throw to, blah, blah, blah. No. Dalton Schultz, I mean, pretty seamless, honestly. Um, Blake Jarwin's a little bit better of a pass catcher, but it is what it is. But I really thought this was going to be a very good game. Arizona has been iffy the last couple weeks, so I was thinking, you know, maybe this is going to be like a primetime game, something that Kyler is going to look forward to and kind of just get up for the game. So I really thought it was going to be a shootout. I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest. Uh, I even tweeted something out. I was like, I just have this weird feeling that Andy Dalton is going to have one of those weird games where the commentator by the end of the third quarter is saying, you know, we always thought Andy Dalton had this in him, um, but he just never had the you know weapons around him to do it. And I was more than wrong. I mean, it was bad. I did not see that coming. Obviously, it the Cowboys O-line, this, this is where I'm going to start is just so bad that I don't I don't even know how to explain it. They're, they're decimated everywhere. They have replacements on every part of the O-line right now. And Andy Dalton had zero time to throw. I mean, I can't blame him for everything. Uh, I mean, he definitely did look rough. I mean, he looked rusty. But he was getting zero time to throw the ball. And then by, I mean, pro, by the second half or second quarter, really, Everything that Dalton threw, I thought was going to be intercepted. It was just one of those games for him where I was thinking, man, every single time the ball leaves his hands, 
this could end up in a Cardinals hands instead instead of a Cowboys player's hands. And it it was rough. I mean, even Zeke had a rough game, two fumbles, basically back to back, more or less got benched for it. Tony Pollard comes in and gets way more touches than he usually does, which they should get him the ball more anyways because he he's a very explosive player. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're seeing over there. Uh, you know, in the Cowboys coaching staff, but it's really weird to me. Um, I mean, that's really all I have for the Cowboys right now. I, there's not much to say. They're just a bad team. The whole NFC East is bad, so I'm not just trying to bag on the Cowboys. Um, but, man, it's just been rough for, for that whole division so far. Uh, to get to a little bit of stuff on the Cardinals, though, man, Buda Baker everywhere. He was unreal. I mean, they were sending him on crazy exotic blitzes here and there. He was great in coverage. He was everywhere. I mean, they paid him this offseason, and he deserves every bit of it, 100%. And then, of course, Kyler. Kyler just got the got the job done uh, straight up. He was, he was great for the most part, like he has been this season. Uh, I mean, he was just throwing the ball down the field super accurately to guys like Christian Kirk, who went for a long touchdown. And, I mean, he was just making the plays where he needed them. He is so fast. It's ridiculous. Like, I want to say he may actually be faster than Lamar. I want to see that that like race straight up. That would be a fun thing to watch by itself. Um, but, yeah, Kyler got the job done at the end of the day. It was a blowout. Uh, I mean, Kenyon Drake finally kind of breaks out. I know a lot of fantasy owners of Kenyon Drake are happy about that one. Finally, he, he gets he gets a game where he looks like he's the lead back that he should. Um, but, yeah, that, that was a, a wild game. The fact that it turned out the way it did was just – it was mind-boggling to me. But, yeah, that, that Dallas O-line, the Dallas defense just continues to look terrible – so it's gonna be it's gonna be rough sledding for the rest of the year for Dallas if Andy Dalton continues to look that bad and the O line continues to look that bad as well. All right, so the next game I'm gonna hit on. Um, I did not get to watch it in full, unfortunately, but it's just something I wanted to like get my thoughts out on. The Green Bay versus Tampa Bay game. The fact that Tampa Bay basically blew them out. Aaron Rodgers left the game early. Uh, I mean not left the game early with an injury or anything. He left the game early because they just didn't want him to get injured because it was just such a blowout. So the one thing I do want to mention, though, and it's something that I had said in previous podcasts about Green Bay, and it's something I I think I've touched on almost every single time I talk about Green Bay on this podcast, is the fact that the Green Bay Packers are a team that loves to play with a lead and – they haven't had to do anything other than that this season except for in this game. Uh, even though Green Bay did go up by 10 to start the game, it was it was still rough sledding for them. And then once Tampa Bay just got on that run, man, it was over. And like I said, the Tampa Bay defense definitely does not like to play from behind. Uh, because they like to, like I said before in, po- in previous pods, they like to pin their ears back and get after the quarterback because that's that's the strength of their defense is the pass rush. But, man, they can't stop the run. Ronald Jones just ran all over them. And that's just one of those things where, like, if if you can keep your offense balanced against the, the Green Bay defense, it's going to be bad. It's, it can get ugly, and it did. Uh, they were able to kind of just manage the game Tampa Bay did against Green Bay, and they were able to just easily win. Uh, I mean, Aaron Rodgers makes a couple mistakes at the, at the beginning of the game with a pick six and then another pick, and it was it was over from then on out. I mean, Tampa Bay's defense was all over the place. They were confusing Rodgers, which doesn't happen that often. Um, but, yeah. I just thought I'd touch on that a little bit. I didn't get to see it in complete full. I will eventually get to watch this game because I want to see some of the some of the more context of, of what happened. Uh, but that was just kind of like a summary of, of the stuff that I did get to see in that game. Now, just to kind of end the pod, I know I said I wasn't going to do this every single week, but when it presented itself, I was going to do it. So we're going to present another Greg Ward Shadow Picture Player of the Week award this week. And it's going to go to Marcus Johnson, wide receiver out of Indianapolis. He 
had over 100 yards receiving. Phillip Rivers was looking to him, and he made some crucial plays in that game for Indianapolis. And, man, I another shadow picture player. He was once a practice squad player. He was actually a former Eagle as well. He was on the Eagles' 2017 Super Bowl uh, team. And the Eagles, the next offseason, actually traded him to Seattle. And I don't know if Seattle just cut him eventually, um, but Marcus Johnson was traded to Seattle from Philadelphia in the Michael Bennett trade the year after the Super Bowl. Uh, and then I'm not exactly sure, like I said, uh, if you know Seattle may have cut him or whatever, but he goes to Indianapolis. He, you know, connects again with Frank Reich, who was the OC of the Eagles in 2017. So they have some mili- some familiarity there. Um, but yeah, Marcus Johnson has a great game. And he is the shadow picture player of the week for us. Um, That pretty much does it for the pod this week. I appreciate all of you guys listening. Uh, Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all at iTestTakes. And we will talk to you next week. See ya.